one little thing here. Frank West. Hi, Frank. I don't know if I know you. I'm just getting myself together here. Give me a second. I'll play over something. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna be that exciting. <laughs> I take you play guitar, Frank. <laughs> what kind of music do you play? people to get on a lot of the stuff that um that i use because what what it is is um i play in, a, in a, a lot of cover band stuff where you're having to play over not like blues stuff where the pentatonic scale works all the time um but what i it's usually stuff like this clash song or the steve miller tune um where you're playing over uh a major major key this one's in g Right, and it's hard, like, you know, if you try and just go, it doesn't really work so great. But then if you also play major pentatonic, that doesn't work. It kind of works better, but it's not so great. So I'll do combinations of stuff. All right, so the major pentatonic scale is kind of the, um, it's like the parent for a lot of this. But I also make sure I know my chord tones. All right, I'm also using chords, other chords in the key. All right, um, I like doing a lot of thirds uh, and sixths where the notes are together. All right, anything to kind of beef it up. This is one of the hardest things about my cover gig is, is playing stuff over just purely major key uh, tunes. Because if you just play that scale, if you say, I'm gonna play G major over this, most people, you know, it's, it's kind of, not very exciting, not very rock and roll. So I try and combine um, like the blues and the country and the, um, uh, you know, all the vocabularies that I, I normally have. Hey Chuck, um, but do it in a way that kind of makes sense. And ultimately, yeah, because your your lines, they need to build, they need to go someplace, but at the core of it, most people don't get the whole conversational part of it where you play an idea and you answer it. All right. Um, so that's that's usually the first part that I get people to, to look at is the idea that they have to actually have a, a structure to what they're playing. Um, and sometimes uh, playing chords that aren't what you expect, like in the key of G, uh, the five chord is, is D, right? So if I just play a D triad over all this stuff, it doesn't sound right per se. But I can use it to kind of build into the next chord. All right, get to resolve. Hey, Garrett. Uh, also, usually at the end of the phrase, uh, on the chorus, we'll get to the chorus in a second. All right, I'll, I'll target notes in those things. Right. And you can kind of 
kind of feel that the, the phrases tend to, um, they want to resolve. They go someplace, and then I've got to do something to kind of bring them back to the chord we're playing over to resolve to the key. And I'm not going outside. I'm not playing anything that's not in the major key. But it helps. Hey, Mark. Um, but the idea being that you're, you're trying to create a little bit of tension and then resolve it. All right. Uh, I like using half-step bends a lot. All right. The thing with half-step bends in the major key um, is that there's either the third note of the scale, which goes up to the fourth, right? So typically, if you go up, it's not going to really work in terms of a resolution unless you go back down. But if you're on the seventh note, which goes up a half step, all right, then you, you actually bend up. So those, those half step bends are neat also because um, we're so used to as guitar players, everything being a whole step bend. Half step bend is actually kind of a neat, uh, a neat sound. It's a different texture. Um, you know, I like doing things in six, but I like doing things as a fake pedal steel kind of thing, where I'm right. So I'm I'm playing um, in the key of G. This is a pretty good simple example. Let's see if I can do this where both cameras are seeing this and my slee stack. <laughs> um, so if I'm in the key of G here. Right, a sixth is basically it's six chord tones apart. Um, in this case, I've got the G. I'm going to go G, A, and B as the top note. And then I've got the B on the, the third string. So you, you have this shape. All right, and then this is A and C. All right, and then this is D and B, right? And I'm basically just I'm going up the major scale on that string and on that string. And it's the same distance apart. I don't want to get too into it, but basically we're harmonizing the scale in um, in six, right? It's nice open sound. But I love doing things like where you take this and I can bend both of those. And it just so happens when I bend it, this one goes up the half step and this one goes up the whole step, which are the next notes in the scale on those strings. Totally out of tune. All right, this one here, I've got the G chord. I'll bend, pre bend the third up a half step and then resolve it. Ah, so, um, it, it's stuff like that. I love doing things which thicken up the sound because the single note thing that gets really boring really quick, right? So, I'm either thickening the texture by playing multiple notes. Right, um, doing the Hendrix Curtis Mayfield thing. Um, I like sliding fourths around. I'll get to each of these in a second. But the idea is that as I'm playing over something like this, um, that I actually have something to do to develop the line instead of just playing the scale. I hope you guys can hear the. I'm going to stop for a second because I just kind of went through a whole bunch of stuff and, and uh, didn't detail it very well. Does anyone have any questions at this point? Yeah, this is one of those things that it, it kind of points out when you need to learn your fretboard and your theory. And I'm not doing anything that's really all that sophisticated. It's not jazz. But the idea is that if you know your major scale, and then you know your major pentatonic scale, which is the major scale minus two notes, all right, minus the seventh and the fourth, all right, and then you also know how to build each of the, the triads or the chords within that. That's most of what I use for all this stuff. You know, the the lesson on my blog this past week it was an old one, but it was uh, it was called originally it was called Thick Lines for Blues. Um, I changed the name when I repurposed it for this week. Um, 
just harmonized lines for blues. All right, and basically what it is is I'm just taking instead of playing single notes, I'm I'm doing combinations of things to give myself a thicker texture. And it's either like thirds, fourths, and fifths, sixths, or even just taking um, bits of chords and moving them around too. And if you think about it, if you're playing notes in the chord, there are no wrong notes, right? Whatever chord you're playing over. So that ends up becoming kind of a nice. Uh, alternative to just playing a scale. The hardest thing as guitar players, uh, when you guys are learning how to play in the beginning, is that we show you a scale and say solo. Uh, and there's not a lot of identification of what all the notes do um, in terms of, of whether or not they're tension notes or the resolution points uh, or if they're chord tones or any of that kind of stuff. So uh, a lot of times you hear a beginning soloist, it just sounds like they're going up and down the scale, all right? And it doesn't really mean anything. And, and a lot of my um, efforts with my beginning students, well, intermediate, beginning at, at this stuff, um, is pushing them towards an understanding that uh, there are notes that are comfortable to resolve to and there are notes that aren't. And you use that tension uh, within each of those, uh, those relationships to actually build your phrases so that they make sense. Um, when you get to these these thicker things where I'm playing more than one note at a time, you'll actually find like in G, I've got the B and the D right here. Uh, and those are chord tones. And then if I go up to the next note, the scale in those strings, all right, the C and the E right here, that's not a good um, resolution point, but it definitely wants to resolve, right? So as I play through each of these things, uh, they actually they have some sort of a function against the um, against the chord. Let me find a different backing track that's just a, a static chord here. Hang on just a second. Anyone got any questions? Problems? <laughs> yeah, Mark. You know the the brown eyed girl thing at the beginning. He's playing like thirds. <laughs> But even like during the song, um, you know, basically what he, what, what whoever's playing that guitar part is doing is they're playing major scale notes. And there's an occasional third or, or six, um, six. I think they do it as a um, as a fourth right there. I, I play it. I, I play it one way. I don't think it's the same as the real recording. All right, but. It's your your note choices, their connection to what you're playing over that becomes important. Um, let me just take a G7. All right, so I've got this first little bit here. This is over seventh chord. All right, this is the third and the fifth of the chord. They're chord tones. All right, then this is the uh, this is actually the sixth and the fourth of the scale. Not resolving, resolving. Not resolving. This ends up being the four and the, and the two. And then that's the open second and it resolves. So you feel like this feels okay against the chord. This feels like it wants to go somewhere. This feels okay against the chord. It wants to go somewhere. This is chord tones. This is the fifth and the seventh. So that feels okay against the chord. That's for like a ninth chord, that'll work. Right. So there's there's a sense of like, as long as you can hear. What the what the sound is doing against the chord. I can play anything. I can play. Right? I took the chord a half step higher and we resolved it. Thank you. 
So here, it gets a seven chord. Ah. Is getting getting to, to make that connection. Uh, it becomes easier to make sense with this stuff as soon as you start hearing if the note wants to go someplace or if it's a place where it's comfortable to sit. I know it sounds kind of funny to say it that way, but the reality is, is most people play guitar without turning their ears on. So they don't really hear that, that sort of thing. If I'm playing over this. actually um, referencing the notes of the chord I'm playing over. So if I was to find a, let's find a, we find one that has two chords in it. There's gotta be one of these things that goes like G. Gotta love YouTube. You don't have any questions at the moment while I'm doing this? It's like the sort of thing I see all the time. Oh, circle of fourths. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Starts on C. Oh, it's like a uh, band in the box kind of thing. <laughs> I'm still over the C. Oh, I'm still over the C. I didn't realize you repeated. All right, now I'm over an F chord. stuff that isn't so I just played B flat mixolydian over this will get boring it should change with E flat chord here in a second so if I just play the parent scale of this there's nothing wrong here there's nothing really all that right either it's kind of boring
So a lot of the stuff I was doing there, it's the same kind of thing I would do over a major chord progression. Uh, it's a little bit easier over the, the dominant chord because I can play much more wacky stuff and get away with it. Um, let me get sense to you guys. You know, the idea is that, you know, you never play all the right notes because all the right notes are going to sound pretty boring and pretty vanilla. All right. So the idea, like if we go back to like the Steve Miller tune, or I'm just playing in G major. I just play the D chord over the G, and then result is the G. Cool. Anyone got any questions? A little weird because I don't if I don't get feedback, I'm not entirely certain if I'm missing the point with you guys or, or what. The, there was a link that I had posted in the original, um, I had posted on Facebook and a couple other places earlier. Um, it's to my blog, and it's got a lesson that's essentially this sort of thing. I'll repost it for you guys. Give me a second. My old computer is an old computer. It looks very slow. Hey, Jeff. So this says for blues guitar, but the the general idea is the same. Okay. Oops. Let's see. Wyatt. Oops. Hang on a second. Why, your, uh, your comic got truncated here on my... Uh... Yeah, I think ultimately, why the, the tension and release thing, um, it, it's, it's everything. You know, you got to build to something. You, you have to do something that needs resolution um, if you're going for a balanced artistic structure. And it doesn't matter... If it's visual arts, if it's music, if it's a story, um, you have to go someplace to come back. And and that's, I think, the um, the problem is that most people, when they play guitar, they don't really have that concept of, of, of you have to do something that needs resolution. Now, you don't have to resolve stuff in a real happy Disney kind of way either. Or, you know, if you don't want to resolve stuff, if, if you're your aim artistically is making people uncomfortable, that's totally cool too. You know, if I bring, um, let me find a, uh, your slow funk in E7. All right, because I can take you through a bunch of different levels of, of tension. <laughs> All right, if I just play the root, nothing interesting there. Same thing with just the arpeggio. All right, but as soon as I start, and right, that's the six, that works. Four to resolve. Sharp four. Sound like the Simpsons, uh. All right. If I play the, uh, most guys will play just the, the uh, pentatonic scale. All right. Not the most interesting thing by itself. All right. But the thing that works, right, is the fact that over the seventh chord, you've got a, uh, a major third, right? The pentatonic scale minor has a minor third. And a lot of, of what makes this work is when people take that minor third and they kind of edge it um, towards the major third. And there's this bit of, of um, there's tension in there that seems like maybe it could get released. Like, watch. Not so good. Oh, actually, this went to another chord, didn't it? Okay. 
minor third, major third. All right, so you're kind of playing with people's expectations. All right, there's yeah, you know, I can play that. That F over the over that E sounds terrible like that, but I can use it, and and as long as I use it quick enough, it's just a different sound. What the egg? I want to see if I can figure out where this is going to go to the E. Right. So what I just did right there, I knew I'm going to E. I know the chord that wants to resolve to E, if we're doing a regular harmony, is going to be a B chord. So even though I'm playing over A, I played a B altered sound with all the funky notes. And it resolved, and it really didn't matter that I was playing B over the A chord, because what you heard was just tension that resolved to the E chord, All right? So if I go back a little bit, I'll do it again. Now listen. Oops, okay. Wasn't sure that was going to end up. Ah, okay. Sorry, I'm like dropping the needle here in the middle. I don't know where the phrase is. Right, right there, I just played that. Right, it, basically an altered B sound that just built all this tension that released into the E chord. Um, the teacher I'm studying with at school right now, his comment to me was like, you know, your note choices don't make any sense as long, or they don't have to make any sense as long as there's a logic uh, within the line, right? And with me playing the wrong chord that resolved into the E, essentially the wrong chord, is that they're all wrong notes until I played the note that made it make sense, which is the resolution to the E chord. Right, I kind of made you uncomfortable. I created that tension, and then I resolved it back into, into what was happening, and it, and it was fine. Um, that's the thing, you know. There's, there's never. I, I hate when people use that whole. There's no wrong notes. There's just bad resolutions. But it, it's kind of true, um, because what what you're dealing with at that point is the fact that um, as long as you're heading somewhere and it eventually makes sense, it's all good, all right? Um, if you head somewhere and it doesn't make any sense, then it's a disaster. If I did the same thing I just did, it just sounds like I missed the change. <laughs> like I don't know what I'm doing, right? Um, because I did, you know, I didn't, there was no logic to what I just played. I just played just a bunch of garbage or instead of applying that tension towards pushing me into the next chord change. Right? And I think that's true of, of any, um, any art form, any kind of communication, all right? You're trying to create something um, that takes somebody someplace. And the, the application of that, um, of that tension is part of what pushes along. If I just was to play a blues, so let me just get a, a standard blues backing track here. Um, everybody's favorite Jimmy Lee backing track company. So this is an E. something messed up. So I just play 
played a bunch of gibberish over the one chord, but I pushed it towards the chord it was going to, and it, it was okay, you know? Wasn't the worst thing in the world. Let me let me bring this back and do it again. The same thing, I just kind of moved it up and down. So what I did right there. The chord was going from the, the five chord, the B, down to the A. I played a B over the B chord, which makes sense. And then I played a, a C, which doesn't make a lot of sense, except for when we get to the, the next chord, the A chord, I'm playing a C sharp, and it resolves back in. So what happens is I just created a really uncomfortable moment, but it was going somewhere. The logic of the line... Let's see how I can do this again. Okay, so then B. I walked against the direction of the bass line, which still made sense. Okay, so one thing that you see in blues a lot is the idea that you're, you, um, you'll, you'll see somebody play against the one chord, a major chord, and then a diminished chord, and then back to the major. If we just sat on the diminished chord, this would be really, really gross, right? But what's happening is that... Um, created a little bit of tension and brought it back. using chords um, as, as targets and then playing weird stuff in between. All right. And as long as you resolve to something, which um, brings up another issue for a lot of people, is you have to be able to look down the road and know what chords are coming up in the chord progression. If you're still trying to remember where the notes in the scale are, then keeping track of chord tones and chord progressions is really hard. You know, So uh, a big push for all this stuff is internalizing stuff so you don't have to think about where to put your fingers. Um, you can use your ears, you can kind of use your brain to kind of think of the structure of the tune. And the 12 bar blues ends up being a great thing to work with um, because it's so predictable. Everybody's heard it a million times, it's in your psyche. Um, and because they're dominant seventh chords, you can play all kinds of really dissonant or quote unquote wrong things uh, and practice resolving them. Uh, and it makes a lot of sense that way, eventually. <laughs> That makes sense. You guys have any questions? This kind of drifted from what the original lesson was supposed to be, but it's it's kind of uh, kind of work into. <laughs> Always like them, like those harp kind of scales that you hear in country music, right? Because there's just so much di like applied dissonance in there with all that stuff just kind of mushing together. You know, you play this stuff by itself. Thanks, Colin. It's kind of gross. Once again, right? But if you play it, um, you know, with a, a uh, a definite rhythm where you don't linger too long on, on the on the nasty crunchy notes right and you resolve it it goes someplace that stuff all works so great cool 
Okay, I'm gonna open it up for questions, comments. Everyone like my sleeve stack shirt? <laughs> I apologize. My, I've got an air conditioner going on here. My studio is literally my garage, um, and it's hot here in California today. So i am uh, got a poor air conditioner that's trying to keep up, but also it's kind of noisy. So. liked um well this year i've kind of gotten to the idea that like i can try just superimposing kind of random crap and then bringing it back if i go back to my slow funk jam here all right so that's all just the e7 but if i right but i was playing there E7, uh, G major, B flat major, D flat major. I'm sorry, Colin, what was that? Uh, something that adding minor pentatonic to a major solo. Anything that creates tension that doesn't really, you know, anytime you're trying to cram a, a, a square peg into a round hole for a little bit, um, where it doesn't entirely fit, you know, uh, at school they call it crunchy, <laughs> crunchy notes. Um, you know, the, there, there's this this bit. Um, you know, I can play major triads uh, if I'm going up in minor thirds, which is essentially a diminished chord. All right, and it's symmetrical, um, and there, there's a little bit of structure to that. Or you could even start on the the flat nine on the F. Right, that actually probably works better. Um, but anytime you, you, you use patterns like that, you play wacky stuff, as long as you bring it back in, it's okay. So. this up is basically taking your pentatonic scale like I'm playing E minor and then halfway through the line just moving up, up one fret and then resolving it back down I don't know. so this over the A I kind of call it, I missed the first part of your, your, your question. Um, 
you know, the, the, the thing with dissonance to me is, is most of the time it's just about different ways to arrange notes that you like or that you don't like. You know, you, if you think about it, all right, I can play over this, this E7 thing that's going on here. All right, besides just the obvious, the chord, John. Right, I can play the pentatonic scale. That's one sound. I can play Mixolydian. Right, I can play the blues scale. You know, I can play uh, um, uh, Lydian dominant sound. I can play a whole tone. Right. Um, and that's not even mixing those sounds. There's a bunch of other sounds, too. You know, at the end of the day, it, yeah, I've got kind of my chord dominant sound. So that's all blues scale. If I want to... So major pentatonic with a fourth added. That's a different sound than just major... Uh, the Mixolydian scale. I like the Mixolydian, but adding chromaticism to it. Over the A. But then you can start getting weird. different styles isn't really you know it's about kind of learning the different ways that people use dissonances in different styles of music you know or if they do at all <laughs> um you know there's there's different textures musically that guitar players generally don't pay attention to and some of it is this this idea of dissonance um some is just the timbre of the instrument um some of it is like where you're gonna voice a chord you know are you gonna play a b here here, here, you know, there's, there's all of these things um, that you can do to make the instruments sound different. All right, same little batch of notes, they sound different in all different parts of the fretboard. Um, you know, uh, we used to play uh, Wind Cries Mary on my cover gig, right? And there's the solo. Well, he doesn't really play that there. If you listen to Hendrix play it, he, he plays up here at the 15th and the 17th frets. Yeah, it's got 
got this clankiness, right? And it's it's this cool thing that just sounds like Hendrix. You know, there, there are certain things that you find where people uh, play stuff. And that's part of their voice, you know? And you start discovering that if you explore the whole fretboard, if you learn a lot of other people's music, and you, you kind of start categorizing or cataloging the stuff that you learn and, and try and repurpose it, you know, even if you do it in a real artificial way, like I'm, I'm sitting here just taking sounds and playing them over, over a backing track, um, eventually that stuff all breaks down into your own sound, you know, in, into your own vocabulary. Uh, you know, I steal stuff, and sometimes you'll hear it on when I play, and you go, oh, that's a Super Ray line. And sometimes you don't know where it came from. So hang on just a second. I've got a guy here on YouTube I keep ignoring. <laughs> I find it hard to do it playing out and liking it. Yeah, I and mean, uh, playing out is not the best thing. And, and I, this, it really isn't a lesson about playing out as much as it is about uh, applying tension, which to me, they're two different things. If we talk about playing out, that's a lot of the garbage I've been playing right now. Um, but you always have to bring the out back in, right? Um, you know, it, it's a more... Um, uh, uh, um, abra I don't want to say abrasive. Uh, you know, th there's 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 doing this stuff uh, when you're playing over something simple, and it's just about a little bit of tension. You know, here's this uh, Clash song. All right, and I'll usually play over this. It's kind of fast, but. two outside there and all I did was I took the triad and I played it down a half step Some of that stuff wasn't major scale stuff. It was uh, like a country dominant seven chord kind of stuff, right? But I would bring it back in, and it's not. So in a way, you can say, "Hey, you're playing out," because you just played a couple things. But to me, that that was more uh, flavoring than outsideness. Does that, does that make you sense? You, you just have to judge what's right for for each particular setting. So, um, so I got just a couple more minutes. I've been kind of yammering and not necessarily uh, making a whole lot of sense, I think, today. I had five nights in a row at the uh, Orange County Fair, and my, my head is just jello today. I kind of feel bad for anyone who's paying me for lessons. So... All right, uh, I'm probably gonna gonna split. Hey, Jacob, I see Jacob Paul. Um, the, I guess I'm doing this pretty much every week. Um, sometimes it'll make sense, sometimes it won't. Um, hey, Tom, um, remember every Tuesday I've got uh, my blog comes out every. Um, Every Saturday, I've got a video lesson on the blog. It's markween.com. Um, let me just post links. Um, if you guys are in the area, I'm playing with All Star Trio on Friday. Um, this Friday at the Blue Beat Newport Beach, like we always do the first Friday of every month. Um, and we're playing a bunch of other places pretty soon. So um, stop by, uh, hang out. I'll talk to you guys later.